Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and welcome back to the Cooperating with Chords series. Um, I'm going to show you uh, a couple different ways to enter chord symbols in Finale. In the first video, I showed you how to simply type them in. But uh, Finale has a couple other ways that I want to show you that um, sometimes can be worth it. I do want to say up front that typing in chords in Finale really is uh, probably the most efficient way to do it. Um, there's a couple other ways here uh, with a MIDI input uh, with a MIDI keyboard and also staff analysis, which can be helpful at times. But, um, you know, both of these things rely on an, an algorithm. And as we probably know by now, Finale's algorithms are, you know, they're, they're fairly pedantic and, and uh, you know, they don't always work when you get into complicated situations. So um, this may be good in some circumstances. I'll let you sort of watch this and decide um, whether or not y using one of these other methods is going to be worth it. But uh, we're going to talk about allowing MIDI input. And when we check that, um, you'll see that manual input is still selected. So technically, we're still doing manual input. And th it sort of works uh, in a very similar fashion. Um, but with this check, we're now allowing Finale to listen to what you play on the, uh, on the MIDI keyboard to enter a chord. And the way this works is very similar to um, uh, you know, manual input typing it in. You, know, you put your cursor where you want to, and then you just play a chord on your MIDI keyboard. And Finale will enter that chord. I played a uh, D major triad. And after it enters the chord, it will move the cursor to the next beat. All right. Now, as I mentioned, this works, uh, you know, with with simple triads like this. So, you know, D major is easy, G major is easy, minor chords are simple, you know, stuff like that. Um, even certain uh, suffixes, you know, D7 is fine, uh, D9 would be okay, s stuff like that. It does get uh, a little bit complicated when you have. Uh, more complicated chords though. And there's a couple limitations to this as well, like Finale will not recognize dyads. So if you just play D and F sharp, uh, it's gonna tell you that that's an unknown chord suffix. And I'm gonna get into this dialog box here in a minute, but let me just cancel out of here for now. So again, you do have to make sure that the, the chord uh, is played exactly correctly. And also the, uh, the inversion as well, because it will recognize uh, roots over alternate bass notes. So if I were to play F sharp A, D instead of D, F sharp A, you'll see that it will give me the D over F sharp chord uh, symbol. If I play it in second inversion, you'll get the D over A, right? So you do have to be careful about how you uh, play these chords in. So if you're thinking as a pianist like I would, I'm going to play D7. You know, if I was playing with two hands, I'd play my left hand on the D and then put my thumb on the C, th and then the D, F sharp, A. But if I just play the right hand chord, Finale's gonna look at that and think that's D7 over C, which is not probably what you intended. I do believe if you play the bass note with that though, it will uh, enter it correctly. So you, do, you just have to be careful about how you're entering these chords. My best recommendation is to always try and just find the um, you know, the most basic version of the chord. So for D7, just type, just uh, play D, F sharp, A, C to get that D7 chord there, all right? Now you do also have to be careful with the voicings because sometimes the voicing can confuse Finale. So I'm gonna play a chord here that's D, F sharp, A, C, D, E, F sharp, right? So that's uh, six different notes, seven different notes all at once. And Finale will indeed give me the right chord symbol, which is D7, nine. If I were to just add another note on top of that, if I'm going to add an A on top of that stack, for some reason, Finale doesn't recognize it. So, you know, as I said, the, the algorithm isn't perfect, so you do have to sometimes be careful about exactly the way that you, uh, that you uh, play the chord in. And there are certain chords that really Finale just won't recognize. The one that bugs me the most is the 13 chord. Like, it almost won't ever recognize a 13, uh, no matter what... Um, you know, what voicing I use. So here I'm going to play D, F sharp, A, C, E, and then a B on the top. And Finale's going to tell me it doesn't uh, recognize that chord suffix, but I know that that's a 13 chord. And I could play it any which way I want. It doesn't matter. Finale's not going to recognize it. Or sometimes it'll recognize something completely weird, like C major 7 sharp 11 over D. Yeah, okay, I guess that's a D 13 chord in, in one sense, but uh, not exactly what I want. 
there are other times too that Finale will just be plain wrong about this. So here's a chord I, I found in this key. G, B, C sharp, F, A. Uh, gives me G7 sharp 11, um, which is sort of wrong. That should be G9 sharp 11 because I played an A on the top there. So again, it's just something that Finale, the algorithm doesn't quite uh, uh, understand exactly what I'm doing. Now there is ways to uh, teach Finale uh, how to do this correctly, and there's there's a couple ways to do this. So I'm just going to play that um, that 13 chord that I played before that it won't recognize. <laughs> at D13, and we're gonna talk about this unknown chord suffix dialog box. Now there's a couple pieces to this you can just cancel if you don't wanna deal with this uh, at the moment, but um, you can let Finale do it, and <laughs> I think it's interesting that the let Finale do it is not the blue button here, so it's saying, yeah, we Finale's saying, we'd rather have you do it, so <laughs> please check this button. <laughs> but um, if you do check the let Finale do it, um, Finale is actually going to attempt to figure out <laughs> the the suffix, and uh, I think it will actually create a suffix. Is it, let me see if that's that's right. If that's a new suffix here, yeah, that's a brand new suffix. Uh, get rid of that for now, um, and uh, which is totally not correct. So um, you know, th there's there's that issue. But uh, the other option I wanted to show you. Let me do that same thing again. So I'll play my D13 chord. And again, we'll choose the blue button here. I'll do it, thank you very much. <laughs> and when you do that, you get the chord definition dialog box, which I'm gonna talk about more extensively in the next video. But uh, when you do this, you can very simply just type the chord symbol in this top box here. So I can just simply type D13 and click OK, and it will add that D13. And the nice thing about this is that if you try and do that again, the, that with that same voicing, it will correctly um, learn that chord as the 13 chord or the D13 chord. Um, more specifically, uh, we'll talk about the learned chords for Finale. If we go into the chord menu here, there's a, uh, a section down here for edit learned chords. And pulling this up, uh, you'll see this mini little dialog box here and this D13 chord now exists. Before I had taught Finale that D13, this was empty, so there's no D13. Uh, chord here at all. All right, and this this dialog box is a little uh, uh, sort of confusing about what's what it's supposed to be doing. Um, so it's basically the the important thing to know is that this is all relative to the key. So this D thirteen chord in the key of D is what's being recognized when I play that. Um, interestingly, if I change this key, let's go back to let's just say we're going to change this to C major. Um, and I try and play in a D13 chord, it's not gonna recognize it. However, if I try and play the C13 chord with that same voicing, it will recognize it. So the <laughs> these learned chords are actually completely relative to the key, uh, which means that if you wanted to have a uh, complete set of 13 chords um, learned in Finale, you have to actually um, create 12 of them, right? So right now I only have D13 learned, which is essentially, you know, the, the 13 chord on the uh, the tonic of the key, right? So it's D13 and D, C C13 and C, you know, F13 in, in the key of F, etc. cetera. Uh, and also considering minor keys, so this will not be a D13 in the key of D minor, unfortunately. So, you know, uh, technically you have to, you'd almost have to create 24 of these to, to uh, recognize this in any key which is, uh, you know, sort of kind of annoying. But, um, you know, if you're working file by file, you just if you just want to learn the chords or teach Finale the chords that are necessary for that file, this, this may be a way to go. Um, but what we can do is, you know, first of all, set the key, uh, which, you know, we're in D major, that's fine. Um, but we can also learn a new chord. If we just press learn, Finale is going to uh, wait for the chord to be played. So in this case, remember I'm in the key of D, uh, now I'm actually going to play an E flat 13 chord with the same voicing, just up a half step, <coughs> right? And finale, and then it's going to ask you what is the the um, the definition of that chord. So in this case, we're going to have to type in E, oops, E flat 13, 
uh, to get that chord. And now you've just taught Finale that E flat 13 chord. And then of course you can use these previous and next buttons to figure out what it is you've defined. So in this case I've only defined the D13 and the E flat 13, right? And click OK. And now that that E flat 13 chord is defined for uh, MIDI playback, I can, or uh, a chord recognition, I can play that E flat 13 chord and it's there. Cool. And again, we can play the D13 chord and it recognizes it. However, if I try to play a C13 chord, it will not recognize it. Um, of course, again, I can teach it. I'll do it. Call it C13. OK. And now we've got the C13. And again, that C13 will show up in the uh, edit chord. So now we actually have uh, three different chords taught to Finale in this file. All right. Now, a couple things to know about these learned chords is that these learned co chords are actually part of the suffix library. So if you ever end up, um, uh, you know, saving the, uh, the chord library here, chords and fretboards library, um, you will be saving these learned chords alongside the library, which is, uh, which is interesting to know. And a couple other things about um, playing in with the uh, manual inputs and allowing MIDI entries that, you know, you can always uh, mix and match between playing the MIDI keyboard and typing. There's nothing from stopping you from doing that. So for here, here for example, I could play that D7-9 chord and then just go over to my computer keyboard and type G7, press spacebar, right? So we can kind of... You can kind of go back and forth as much as you need to. This is A7 over C sharp. You should recognize that. All right. So, uh, you know, it's it's possible to do this. D7, uh, G9 over B. Doesn't quite recognize that. Well, I guess, no, technically that's right. B minor 7, flat 5. I have no G in there, so it's not a G7 chord. Uh, and then, of course, we're now we're in between uh, rhythms, so we can press the space bar. So, again, you can sort of, there's D7 over A. Mix and match. I can type this one, A7, space, space, and uh, let's try this one. I don't think rec it's going to recognize this. No. <laughs> I was trying to get uh, D add 9, but as you can see, it's not recognizing that. So, you know, as I said, it's, it is, um, it, it has its imperfections, but uh, it, it is possible to do this. All right. Let me just go back and delete all that. Oh, the other thing is that uh, you know if, if you um, if you either type a chord or you know play a chord in, um, whenever you uh, click on that chord again, you can always play something on top of it, and it will replace that chord just as if you had typed over it. So that it works the same way uh, as um, as the typing uh, inputs. So that's the the uh, the allow MIDI input um, version of the manual inputs. All right. So again, if that's unchecked, um, you know, anytime you play something, it's not going to have any effect on inputting chords. But uh, again, it's again uh, the allow MIDI input is technically part of the the manual input. The other thing I want to talk about because it's somewhat related is the one staff, two staff, and all staff analysis methods of uh, putting in chords. So for now, let's just check on the, the one staff analysis. And now you can see that the manual input gets unchecked and you don't even have the allow MIDI input option available. All right. So this is actually a, a different way of uh, entering chord symbols in Finale. Now with that checked, what this will allow Finale to do is you can just click over any uh, any chord, sometimes you have to redraw, and it will uh, figure out that chord that's written in that staff. And as you can see, it worked perfectly fine there. It gave me the D major chord on that guitar one part. It gives me the G7, D major. Um, now the trick to this is that you do have to do this one at a time. You can't, you can't do this um, uh, a whole, whole bunch at a time. G7. And as I've said, you know, with simple chords, it, it works fairly well. So, you know, I have nothing more complicated than a seventh chord and it, you know, sort of accurately um, put in all of those chords th the right way. Sometimes with more complex chords, uh, with this situation, you know, you'll get uh, F sharp minor seven flat five over C, which technically it is because with the one, what I'm doing here is one staff analysis. So it's only considering the top staff. It's, it's ignoring the base uh, line here. So I should get something like uh, G7 over B here, D over A, right? So we're going to get some some funky D7 over C. Again, it's ignoring that uh, second line. However, 
uh, if I switch over to two staff analysis, uh, it will consider that line right below it. Now it will only consider the the staff that you're clicking at plus the staff directly below it. So and it doesn't have to be a grand staff. Um, uh, it just considers those two staffs and those two staffs alone. So uh, click there. Now it's recognized this is D79, right? Because the D is in the base. That should recognize as G7. Plain D, A7, over C sharp, which is correct, right? D7. That recognizes as B minor 7 uh, flat 5. Uh, again, there's no G in that chord, so that's why I'm not getting G7 over B, D7 over A, A7. And it will probably do the same thing with this chord. Yeah, it gives me that funky F sharp minor 7 sharp 5 over D, right? Um, now, if you run into chords that it does not recognize, um, like that uh, 13 chord, let's see, I don't think I defined a uh, G13 chord yet. So if I create one here, um, it will not, again, with the two staff analysis, you'll get the same uh, thing that happens with the MIDI input. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna, I got two staff analysis. It's going to say, yeah, it's going to give me the, the weird one. Uh, if I'd uh, done that correctly, let's try that again. I kind of wanted to do this this version of it. There we go. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's going to give me an unknown chord suffix. And again, it'll do the same thing. So you just say, I'll do it. And G13. Okay, and it will, again, it will add that to the edit learned chords. Now you've got that G13. Uh, in that library with the other ones that I had created previously. All right, so that's uh, that's how that works. And then finally, the, the last version of this is uh, called All Staff Analysis. If we go back to here, All Staff Analysis. Now this, what this will do is we'll, it will look up and down the entire score, and it doesn't matter where you click. I can click in the bass note here uh, and redraw for some reason, and it will put the uh, chord symbol over the bass, but it's considering the entire stack of, uh, of chords there. So we could do it on guitar two, it will do the same thing, or guitar one will do the same thing. And again, the same issues apply. So look at the second chord, uh, where there's only a G, a B, a G, and G. So there's no, there's no completed triad here, and uh, Finale is not going to recognize it, right? So uh, again, there's the same limitations apply. This is a full chord. This is a full chord, so it's going to recognize it. Um, so you know anything that applies to the um, uh, the, the MIDI input uh, uh, chord symbols is is going to apply to the uh, to the staff analysis input. Now I mentioned that it's you can't um, do more than one at a time with these staff analysis, except that there is a plugin that uh, comes with Finale. Uh, it's in the uh, scoring and arranging section here, and it's called the, it's called the chord analysis. Now, what this will do is it will uh, analyze the entire section that you select. It's sort of basically as if you're clicking one at a time. And there's a whole bunch of different options here. You can choose which uh, staff you want the chords to go into. In this case, we'll say guitar one uh, for the heck of it. Um, you can add, you know, you have options of where to add the chord symbols, whether it's the first note in each measure, all downbeats, all notes, let's say all notes. And uh, in this case, because you're not doing them one at a time, it's going to uh, give you a chord suffix of question mark if it doesn't recognize it. So you usually see a lot of question mark suffixes when you do something like this. Well, there's a few other options allowing repeated chord symbols. Um, or repeat chord symbols at the beginning of system. You can check, you can, you know, check those as however you need to, uh, given what you're doing. And then when you click OK, it should analyze the whole passage for you. And again, with that second one, it's not recognizing the simple dyad, so it's giving you a G question question mark uh, suffix right there. All right, so that's in the plugins uh, scoring and arranging chord analysis tool there. All right. Uh, so that's um, you know MIDI and uh, staff analysis input. As I said, it, it's you know if you're doing some simple chords, it's it's not so bad to use this. But uh, you know once you get into some more complex things, it, it does get a little bit uh, tedious to to kind of keep teaching Finale to uh, you know recognize the chords and everything. So you know it's up to you uh, whether or not and how you want to use this. But uh, that's how it works. All right. So thanks for watching. 
Uh, I think the next video we're going to start talking about the chord definition dialog box, which is important. So uh, come back for that. All right. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you soon on the next video.